This is part two of my um, little series on OpenTX programming for helicopters. Um, in part one, I just covered the different types of helicopters and discussed the distinctions between them from the point of view of a transmitter programming to make it easier for people to determine what type of helicopter they were dealing with and how it needed to be programmed. And if you're not sure about what type of helicopter you, uh, you want to create a program for, it, it would be a good idea to review that video. Um, if you know what type of helicopter you've got and you're clear about how it, uh, you know, whether it has a flight controller and whether pitch can be uh, controlled directly from the transmitter in it, then you're okay, uh, you know, you know where you are. This video is dealing with programming for the most common type of helicopters available today. That is those with internal flight fly barless helicopters with onboard flight controllers, um, which give you uh, full control of pitch and throttle from the transmitter. Uh, this would be uh, typical of all of the XK helicopters, which are depicted here. And the particular example I'm going to use is a program for the XK110, which is the second little helicopter back there, but much the same program, well, fact, exactly the same program would perfectly well fly any of these helicopters. Uh, and with very minor differences, you could fly the modern blade helicopters, things like the 150AS and the 130S, or old, slightly older things like the MCPX, anything with an onboard flight controller. You'd have to change the channel order for the blade helicopters because they put uh, throttle on channel 1. Whereas these uh, being more Futaba, based, well they are Futaba based, put uh, throttle on channel 3. Throttle on channel 3 is more common on the whole, but anything spectrum based is going to put um, throttle on channel 1. Anyway, let's get to the programming. And for the programming, uh, I'm going to be looking at OpenTX Companion because that's a lot easier to show you things in than trying to show you the screen on the transmitter. Everything I'm doing here you could of course do directly on your transmitter. Well, depends exactly what transmitter you've got, but generally if you've got an OpenTX transmitter it should mirror what's here exactly what it looks like on the transmitter or vary from transmitter to transmitter. I'm actually using a jumper T16. Um, so that's what this specifically co corresponds to in terms of transmitter, but uh, it should, you know, the OpenTX programming should essentially work the same with any OpenTX transmitter. So we've defined the name of the model here, we've defined an image for... Uh, oh, for goodness sake. So I was just interrupted by an annoying telemarketing call, but now we will try and resume. So we've got the model defined here. Um, there's not a lot being done on this initial setup page. We've got a timer here, four minute timer is set. Um, and that is conditional on switch, logical switch L4. Logical switch L4 is on an A is greater than X condition based on channel 3, the throttle being greater than minus 80%. So logical switch L4 will be true whenever the output throttle is greater than minus 80. So this means the timer will turn on and count down whenever the output throttle is greater than minus 84 minutes might be slightly optimistic for the K110 on a battery if you're flying aggressively, but it should be okay for more sedate flight. Um, I have changed the switch warning settings to warn when switch F is towards the back of the, towards the back of the transmitter basically these switch warnings will warn whenever the switches are not in the position indicated here is how that works so the, but the default is that all switches are expected to be towards, towards the back of the transmitter and if they're not you'll get a warning I've changed that for switch F I want to get a warning if it is towards the back of the transmitter and not get a warning if it's towards me because I use switch F for the throttle cut and I like the cut position to be towards me and the live position to be towards the back of the transmitter. I think a lot of people like that because it makes it much easier to quickly flick the throttle off if you have an emergency or something. You just It's just by your left hand and you just flick the switch up towards you. It's much easier to do that than to go around the back of the switch and flick it away from you. So that's the only reason we put the throttle switch round that way rather than the other way, the throttle cut switch. And then, of course, I have to set up how I'm going to bind to the helicopter, which in my case, since I'm using a Jumper T16, I'm using the DIY multi-protocol internal multi-protocol module with SFHSS protocol, and I would bind from that. 
and that's all I've set up on the initial model page. This heli page is for CCMP, uh, Cyclic Collective Mix Programming. We do not use it at all for this type of helicopter because we are not driving the uh, cyclic servos directly from the transmitter. We're talking to a flight controller. So this nothing you put on this page would have any relevance whatsoever for a helicopter like uh, these XK helicopters or the newer blade helicopters that have fly, fly barless helicopters with flight controllers. So skip that page entirely. We are going to define four flight modes. Hold mode, normal mode, idle up one and idle up two. That's pretty standard for a helicopter. And they are conditional on logical switches. Logical switches L1, L2 and L3 are to drive the normal idle up one and idle up two modes. Each of these logical switches is conditional on two conditions both being met. That's what this means, and. It means this and this must be true for that logical switch to be true. So logical switch one is true if switch F is towards the back of the transmitter, which means throttle cut is off. That's what that's intended to do. And switch E is towards the back of the transmitter. Switch E is going to be our flight mode select switch when a throttle cut is off. So switch E and back makes logical switch one true. Throttle cut off and switch E in the middle makes logical switch two is true. Throttle cut off and switch E in the position towards me makes logical switch three true. And those logical switches, logical switch one true causes us to be in normal mode. Logical switch two true causes us to be in idle up one. Logical switch three causes us to be in idle up two. If none of those logical switches, one, two, or three is true, then we default to, to, to hold mode. There is no condition for the first the zero flight mode in OpenTX. The idea is that the craft will default into the zero mode whenever none of the conditions for any other flight mode are met. So, and that's all we've defined on these flight mode pages. I haven't done anything else with any of these other things, which basically means I'm just using one set of trims all through the flight modes. But I haven't defined, uh, uh, all I've defined is the names of the flight modes and the conditions that cause them to be true, the logical switches. Now we get to the inputs page, and the inputs page is probably the most complicated one, but it's really not all that complicated in what's in there. Uh, our order here is aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. Those are our four actual input sticks, and that's the order uh, they are in. That's the Futaba standard order. It's the, it's the default order I've got in my transmitter, and it's basically the order that this um, helicopter expects. It expect, very most critically, it expects the throttle to be on channel three. Uh, channel one, we say aileron, but I mean it's basically lateral cyclic would perhaps be a more app term for a helicopter, um, i.e. side to side tilt. Channel 2 is elevator, which is forward and back tilt, i.e. longitudinal cyclic. The rudder is the yaw, i.e. the tail control. Now we have a second input here, which I've put on channel 6. Well, I put it in as input 6 because I'm ultimately going to output it on channel 6 because that's where the helicopter expects it. And this is for pitch control. I've called it coal for collective and it is dependent on the throttle stick. So I've got two inputs both dependent on the throttle stick, which when you think of it for a collective pitch helicopter is entirely logical because your throttle stick, your collective stick on a collective pitch helicopter drives both the throttle and the pitch. But it drives them according to different curves, which is why we want two separate inputs for it. So this input is to drive the actual throttle, the, the, the motor, and it has four it has four sub lines, each dependent on a flight mode. So, for example, this is our first line. The source is the throttle stick. It is applies only when we're in flight mode zero, which is hold mode. The, the, these these the, 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 the entries on this line define what flight mode the the this line applies to. So you check which ones it applies to. In um, in, in OpenTX Companion anyway, on the transmitter it's you, you click them and they sort of grey out the ones that it doesn't apply to. But So this line applies only in flight mode 0 and it's dependent on a curve which is curve 7 which I have called THH for throttle in hold mode. 
so then in the same way the next one is, is this line applies only in flight mode one you can see it right here you don't even have to bring that up I mean bringing up this this is how you define it is by choosing the things here you know you, you click your different things I don't want that to be applicable in time, so I'm gonna do it but but then it shows it here so it comes from the throttle stick its weight is a hundred percent it's determined it's de it's determined it's increase as the throttle stick increases is determined determined by curve one which I've called THN for throttle normal and it only applies in flight mode normal this one is for flight mode two idle up one and uses curve two which I've called TI one for throttle in idle up one and then I've got a curve three for throttle in idle up two and I've got the only other option I've got on them is no trim because I don't want the throttle to be trimmed so if we go and look at those curves, this is curve one, this is my throttle in normal mode. So it starts at minus 100, goes up fairly rapidly, and then levels off and goes across. And that's a, you know, a fairly typical normal mode throttle curve. Um, this is my throttle curve for idle at one, i.e. the throttle is just constant at 70%. Now, I know some people prefer to have their throttle dip down a bit in the middle. If you want to do that, then what you would do is you would basically change it to a three-point curve and uh, something like that. So that would give you a, yeah, I'm going to dip it down a bit more than that. That would give you your typical curve that some people like where in idle up mode, where it's, where it's a certain strength at the end but it dips down a bit in the middle it's entirely up to you the the manual actually suggests just using um, a straight constant throttle but it's up to you if you'd like prefer it to dip down a bit as you take the stick through the middle um, and then this is for idle up one mode where the throttle is at 70 percent and this is for idle up two where the throttle is at a hundred percent and that is actually what the manual recommends and then i've got a curve seven defined for throttle hold where where the throttle is always at minus 100 so what that's saying is when you use this curve curve seven this mean this will basically mean this of itself without anything else will force the throttle to always stay at minus 100 when you're in flight mode zero because that's the curve it's dependent on and then collective six uses separate curves to drive the pitch pitch normal, pitch idle up one, and pitch idle up two, uh, which I've put in as curves four, five, and six. Uh, I've left the normal pitch curve applicable in both normal mode and hold mode, which you don't have to, of course, it doesn't really matter whether you can move the pitch in hold mode since the motor can't turn anyway. I just like to see my pitch moving in hold mode. If I've got the helicopter in hold mode and I move the throttle stick up, I just like to see the pitch changing through the normal normal pitch curve just to verify that everything's working properly so I leave my pitch normal curve applicable in hold mode and normal mode and if we look at those curves the pitch curves this is my pitch curve for uh, normal mode of course you can define these I mean if you've programmed helicopters before presumably you know how you want to uh, you know uh, program your pitch and throttle curves but so we start with slightly negative pitch go very rapidly up to a positive pitch and then increase you know proportionally that's uh, this is not exactly what the manual recommends but it's just how I, I like it so um, you know you, you you can decide yourself how you want to set but your, your pitch curve for, for normal mode but you'll know about that if uh, if you programmed helicopters before um, and then in idle up mode our pitch for idle up one is just a straight line that's pretty standard for pitch you go from a standard negative amount to a standard positive amount um, I'm going from minus 40 to plus 40 uh, that's what the manual for the K120 recommends for the K120 I think the manual for the K110 actually recommends minus 50 to plus 50 so that just be a slightly steeper line um, but um, you know, it's it, it's up to you. Uh, you know, you, if you find you want a bit more pitch, make the line steeper. If you want a bit less pitch, make the line less steep. The car, the curve for idle up two is exactly the same as the curve for idle up one, which is what the manual suggests. So there you are. So that's your your throttle and your collective. Um, the reason I've got multiple lines on aileron, elevator, and rudder is just for variable rates that's there's nothing very mysterious there I'm just saying with the first line the rate is 75% and this is dependent on expo 
and I'm going to put 65% expo and this is applicable in all flight modes and it uh, but it only applies when switch G is back so I'm using switch G as my rate switch and I'm switching on aileron I'm switching between 75 80 and 100% rates the weight changing the weight here in the input line will effectively just give you a rate because making the weight 75% means that the value output value will go from minus 75 to plus 75 as you move the stick the whole way so it's just a way of applying a rate basically and i've got lots of expo on here uh, 65 60 and 50 percent expo and this is dependent on switch g switch g in the back position gives me low rate switch g in the middle position gives me mid rate switch g in the forward position gives me higher the position towards me gives me high rate i'm using the same switch for rates for all three um, uh, you know, uh, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Um, if you prefer, you can use three separate switches if you've got lots of switches on your transmitter, and some people like to have their rates for the different uh, things controlled differently. I don't entirely see why you'd want to have different rates for aileron and elevator. I can see where you might want to have different rates for rudder, and I do have different expo on the rudder. Um, uh, anyway, it's entirely up to you. You, 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 you know, if you wanted to make this conditional, the rudder conditional on a different switch, you could just choose a different switch here, so long as you've got a different switch. But um, I'm going to leave it alone the way here. So I've got one switch, switch G, which is switching aileron, elevator, and rudder, all between high, low rates, mid rates, and high rates. Um, gyro. Well, gyro is a bit of a funny one. Gyro is a bit of a funny one. Um, there's no doubt that for the K110, gyro control is on channel 5, and so I'm defining it as input 5, although this is inputs, this is not actually the channels, I'm just keeping them matched to the channels for, sim for simplicity. It just seems to be more straightforward to match them across the same way they are, but they don't have to be. You can change them through the subsequent programming. But gyro is going to be channel 5. Um, these values are based on the manual. Uh, well, no, no, I beg your pardon. I tell a lie. They're not based actually on the manual. They're based on, based on me checking what the T6 transmitter that comes uh, with the ready to fly version of these helicopters does. Uh, the manual actually is a little different. If I can look at that for a moment, this is what the manual says. The manual says, and it's in, kind of in Chinglish, it's, it's a bit. Uh, uh, gyro switch up becoming 6g pose mode when the gyro setting value is between 70 and 100 gyro switch button down becoming 3d lock mode when the gyroscope setting is between 0 and 30. now you've got to remember that when they say this they're talking in futaba terms where the where the channel goes between 0 and 100 um whereas when we're programming in open tx it goes between minus 100 and plus 100. so uh, 70 and 100 you've got to you've got to measure it from 70 is 20 percent above 50 so that would be basically plus 40 to plus 100 and this would be minus 100 to minus 40 basically when in open tx terms you you've always got to be when translating from things like futaba and spectrum they're talking in terms of a zero to 100 range a lot of the time um always especially in terms of gyro whereas in open tx we're dealing with a minus 100 to plus 100 uh, range um, so to go back to the programming um, what i'm actually doing is sending a value of plus 50 when the switch is back and that should turn 3d stable 6g stabilization on and then when the switch is in the middle or forward position i'm just using a three position switch because i don't have a two position one there's only one two position switch on the t16 when the switch is either in the middle or forward, I'm sending minus 50%, um, which should turn the 3D, which should put you in 3D mode and turn the 6G stabilization off. These values are equivalent to Futaba values of 25 and 75, which is what the actual T6 transmitter that that, they, that XK ship with these things sends. I looked in the, the, uh, the I got the T6 transmitter I have from one of them out and went into its programming and looked and it it is sending when the 6 it, when the 6g switches in uh, when the 6g 3d switches in 6g mode it's sending 75 
when it's in 6G mode it's sending 75 when it's in 3D mode it's sending 25 so what I'm doing here is just emulating what that switch on the on the transmitter that they send with the ready to fly version does and I'm putting it on switch B so switch B back should be in 6G mode 6B not back anywhere forward middle or forward should be in uh, 3D mode I've put uh, channels 7 and 8 on switches C and D but I think that's actually redundant for this particular helicopter the K110 because I don't think these helicopters use channel 7 and 8 for anything but uh, because I've just put them on switch C and D they'll switch between uh, minus 100 0 and 100 in the three positions of the switch but I don't think that will do anything on this helicopter but it might on some helicopters these are sometimes used for switching other options on the helicopter and usually when they use just for switching options they will commonly just use uh, minus 100 0 and 100 um, so I think that's everything we need to say about the inputs and then we look at the mixes the mixes are extremely simple because I've basically done everything on the input page a lot of what I'm doing on the input page you could also do on the mix page open TX is kind of like that it, a lot of you can do a lot of the same things in slightly you know, very very similar ways but, uh, but on the inputs of the mixes page but since I've done everything I want to do on the inputs page I really am not doing anything on the mixes page other than passing my inputs out to my output channels so I'm passing input 1 to output 1, input 2 to output 2, input 3 to output 3, etc. And because I put them in the order I was going to put them out anyway, they're just passed directly. The names that you see here on the channels, you cannot put in here. They don't. The names come from the output page. The reason you're seeing names here, like the reason it says channel 1 aileron, channel 3 throttle, rather than just saying channel 1, is because I've put a name in here on the output page, which I think is convenient to do. Again, it's not necessary, it's got nothing to do with flying the helicopter, but it makes it clearer to understand what you're doing when you look at the programming that I've named all of the channels as to what they do. Channel 1 controls lateral cyc uh, cyclic, channel 2 controls longitudinal cyclic, channel 3 controls the throttle, channel 4 controls yawing, channel 5 controls the gyro, channel 6 controls the collective setting pitch, and 7 and 8 don't really do anything, which is why I just called them 7 and 8. Uh, the other critical thing on this page is that I have it reversed channels 1 and 4, the air, the lateral cyclic and the yaw, the aileron and the rudder. This is necessary for this helicopter. This is the way it needs to be. Um, that setting direction to IMV like this, you either set it to IMV or nothing. So it's either reversed or it's not reversed. This is just the equivalent to a channel reversal. And this just means that aileron and rudder will operate in the reverse direction. And that is necessary if you do not invert those, then nothing else is inverted. The other channels all need to be direct. They need to be inverted. If you don't invert those, uh, the helicopter will not fly, um, basically. If you don't invert the aileron, when you when you put the, the, the cyclic to the right, it will actually go to the left. And if you don't invert the rudder, it will just spin like a top as soon as you try and spin it up, frankly, I think. Um, so we definitely need those two inverted. Uh, we've already dealt with all the curves we defined, and we've already dealt with all the logical switches we've defined, so the only other thing we need to look at is special functions. Um, and there's a lot of special functions, but don't let that be intimidating, because most of them are doing nothing but playing sounds. I just like to be told what I'm doing when I flick a switch, so I've got switch uh, sounds in here for every switch I flick, basically. The only two uh, functions here that are actually doing something as opposed to playing a sound are this first one which says if switch F is towards me override channel 3 which is the throttle to minus 100 and turn that on. I've never quite understood why when you define an override you have to turn it on. Why would I want to define an override and not turn it on? I'm sure there must be some reason else they wouldn't have put it in but I can't think what it is. I can't think why I'd want to put in a special function to override and then not turn it on. But you have to remember to click that on, because if you don't, see if, if that's like that, it won't do anything, because it's not turned on. Um, so that, that line of itself will produce a throttle hold. So as you will probably spot, it is in fact redundant here, because I've already implemented the throttle hold through hold mode, so I'm kind of putting a throttle hold in twice here. There's this belt and braces approach in case one. Well, it's not in case one doesn't work. It's definitely going to work if it's programmed correctly. It's in case I make an error programming something. But I, I've basically got two separate things programmed that produce uh, throttle because 
in in thro in uh, throttle in hold mode, I'm using a zero to zero curve for throttle, which is going to cut the throttle. Uh, uh, so beg your pardon, a minus one hundred to minus one hundred curve, uh, uh, a, a curve which cuts the throttle permanently to its minimum position. So the throttle will always be minus one hundred in hold mode anyway. But even if I didn't have that. S simply putting that switch back, regardless of that, would, would any, in any case make the throttle go to minus 100 if the switch F is back. The only other function I've got in here that actually changes something as opposed to just playing a sound is that I've said when Swiss a switch H, which is the momentary switch on the right, is back, reset timer 1, and again you have to turn that on. Pretty much anything other than playing sounds you have to turn on for it to actually do anything, which means you just have to click this little thing on the right to switch it on. Uh, this is just so I can reset the timer, so if I put a new battery into the helicopter and I want to fly it again, I just press switch H and that resets my timer to its maximum value so I'm ready to start again. All of these other things just play tracks. Switch F is my throttle cut, so when it's back it plays the sound that says throttle held, when it's forward it plays the sound that says throttle active. Uh, logical switches 1, 2, and 3 are the flight mode. Logical switches that switch on the flight mode, so they play sounds that say normal mode, idle up 1, idle up 2. Switch B is my stabilization switch, so when it's back it plays a sound that says stabilization on because I'm in 6G mode. When it's in the other positions it plays a sound that says stabilization off because I'm in 3D mode. And switch G is my rate switch. I could have multiple rate switches, as I said, but I don't. I only have one here, so that plays sounds that say low rate, mid rate, and high rate. And switches C and D control channels 7 and 8, and they're not really doing anything, so I'm just playing them. It'll just play the values, so it'll just actually, I'm playing the value of channel 7, so when I flick that back, it'll just say minus 100, and when I put it to the middle, it'll just say 0. They're not really doing anything. And I, there's no telemetry here, so nothing at all on that page. So I think, if I haven't forgotten anything, I should have covered everything um, here. So. You know, if we simulate here, where are we? So, if switch F, if switch F is in the back position, the throttle is at minus 100. And if you watch that throttle, it doesn't. Even when I raise the throttle stick, it doesn't go up anywhere. And you can see here that we're in flight mode zero. I've got switch E back, so when I take throttle hold off, now I'm in flight mode one, which is normal mode. And if you watch the throttle and the other uh, and the pitch this is this is throttle this is pitch so you'll see the throttle and the pitch going up as i raise the uh, the throttle stick um if i move where is it if i move switchy into the middle position i'm now in flight mode one which is idle up one my throttle is now fixed at 70 and you'll see my pitch moves evenly from a negative value to a positive value between negative and four, uh, 40 and a positive 40. And then if I go all the way to idle up 2, my th I'm in flight mode 3, my throttle is at 100% and my pitch still does the same thing. Uh, but as soon as I flick switch uh, SF back, then my throttle is cut, regardless of where my... Uh, my throttle stick is. My throttle is forced to minus 100. Uh, well, I hope that is clear and uh, I've conveyed there what is necessary to program and get this helicopter working um, in OpenTX and uh, as I say this should work for pretty much any kind of helicopter that has an onboard flight controller and gives you control over the pitch and if it does give you control over the pitch that will usually be on channel 6 um, these other channels would be in a different order for a spectrum type helicopter that would be it would it would have throttle on channel 1 and then aileron and elevator on channels 2 and 3 that would be the main most obvious difference and the, and, and the way that channel 5 would work would be different to control the stabilization mode and some helicopters might also use 7 and 8 for something I, uh, I hope that has conveyed everything that I need to convey. If you have any questions or I've been unclear about anything, uh, please do ask in the comments section at the uh, underneath and I will do my best to reply. Um, uh, I will subsequently go on to deal with programming a couple of other types of helicopters in, uh, in uh, parts uh, 3 and 4 of this series.